Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Reflection on the Rock here at Covenant United Methodist Church on Wednesday, September 14th. Tonight, we're going to look at um, a Psalm 79. I didn't write it down. Uh, a few verses in there. And we're going to, uh, you might want to turn on the lights. Either that or, you know, I don't know, turn down the lights and kind of experience the darkness. Because uh, we're going to talk about what it's like to feel this kind of darkness surrounding us and what we're going to do with that. And the, the, it's not exactly a chipper psalm. It's we're a gonna, lament. Yeah, it's a, it is definitely a lament. Mm. So I invite you to get out your Bibles for uh, Psalm uh, 79. But in the meantime, we're going to center ourselves with the hymn, Forgive Our Sins. <laughs> Forgive our sins as we forgive. You taught us, Lord, to pray. But you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. Hmm. Amen. Amen. So Psalm 79, the first nine verses. O oh God, pagan nations have conquered your land your special possession. They have defiled your holy temple and made Jerusalem a heap of ruins. Mm. They have left the bodies of your servants as food for the birds of heaven. The flesh of your godly ones has become food for wild animals. Blood has flowed like water all around Jerusalem. No one is left to bury the dead. Hmm. We are mocked by our neighbors, an object of scorn and derision to those around us. Oh God, how long will you be angry with us? Forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Mm -hmm. Pour out your wrath on the nations that refuse to acknowledge you on kingdoms that do not call upon your name. For they have devoured your people, Israel, making the land a desolate wilderness. Hmm. Do not hold us guilty for the sins of our ancestors. Let your compassion quickly meet our needs, for we are on the brink of despair. Hmm. Help us, O God, of our salvation. Help us for the glory of your name. Save us and forgive our sins mm -hmm. for the honor of your name. Mm. I know, heart-wrenching. Yeah, it, it was like a war scene from the Ukraine yes. or someplace. That's a good analogy. This psalm is uh, uh, referred to as a national lament. And it's about these dark days and bad times um, and about God's seeming absence. How long, O oh Lord, will you, you know, leave us? And uh, it just is a, again, heart-wrenching, heart-wrenching lament. But it's also a prayer. Uh, and Psalm 79 it's what Donald McKim calls a deep expression of prayer in the midst of devastation mm. when the hardest of harms has to be endured. Oh, gosh. And that's heavy stuff. And, yeah. and yet, it's not unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. And for any of us who have gone through a hardship or a struggle or our own laments, this hardest of harms is, it rings true. Mm -hmm. We have a feeling what it's like. And I think of it as kind of this pit of despair. 
How long, O oh God, must we endure? Where are you in the midst of the darkness? And help us that plea. But we're, you know, this has been a, a common theme throughout humanity that we have looked for help um, in times of trial. And way back in the 16th century, St. John of the Cross wrote mm. a poem. It was a song about this kind of devastation and darkness. Mm -hmm. And he called it Dark Night of, of the, the Soul. soul. Yeah. And he was a Spanish mystic, which means, in, uh, the way I interpret it is that he was really in tune with the, the spiritual <coughs> realm that kind of had the power to feed the soul. And um, Wikipedia says that this poem, Dark Night of the Soul, narrates the journey of the soul to a mystical union with God. And this journey called the Dark Night, it's in part because <coughs> darkness represents the fact that the destination, the God, is unknowable. And the path, per se, to get us there is unknowable. Another heavy lament. And so when we wander in the darkness with just enough faith to see us through to the morning, we have a sense of that devastation, the darkness, the heaviness of light, and the... Um, the one hymn that we're going to um, use in a minute, it refers to the night watchman. And it's like the night watchman who waits for the dawn. Mm -hmm. And in Roman Catholic spirituality, this dark night is symbolic of the spiritual crisis. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's then, like the psalmist, that we question God. Where are you? And we call to God and wonder how much longer until the sun rises. Hmm. And so just like the psalmist and like St. John of the Cross, we find times when our faith is weak, our souls are heavy laden, and yet also like the psalmist, and St. John of the Cross, we have the power to experience um, the darkness in a positive way, uh, to be and trust in God even more when it's bright mm. and sunny mm -hmm. and hunky-dory. God is present in the darkness, um, in the silence, when it seems that God doesn't answer our pleas and calls for help. God is there. And the, since the four, four centuries that have passed since um, St. John of the Cross wrote The Dark Nights of the Soul, there were um, words to a hymn um, just recently, a contemporary one called Holy Darkness. Darkness, yeah. And the lyrics begin with God speaking, and then at the very end, we hear our own voice reply. Oh, wow. <laughs> it does choke you up when you think about this presence in the darkness, yeah. but unseeable, unknowable, know. but we know. So the lyrics go like this. I have tried you in the fires of affliction. I have taught your soul to grieve. In the barren soil of your loneliness, there I will plant my seed. Hmm. I have taught you the price of compassion, and you have stood before the grave. Though my love can seem like a raging storm, this is the love that saves. Were you there when I raised up the mountains? Can you guide the morning star? 
Does the hawk take flight when you give command? Why do you doubt my power? In your deepest hour of darkness, I will give you wealth untold. When the silence stills your spirit, will my riches fill your soul? As the watchman waits for morning and the bride awaits her groom, so we wait to hear your footsteps as we rest beneath your moon. Oh, wow. Isn't that, you know, when you wow. sing it, it's powerful. Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow. Well, on that note, <laughs> um, the prayer music is another, uh, based on another psalm that is also a lament. Yes. And it's called, How Long, O Lord? And here are, um, well, before I give you the words, let me tell you who we're, update you on who we're praying for. We continue to pray for Greg, whose mm -hmm. um, um, pain management is, is not going well. No. Um, and Anne's friend, Leo, mm -hmm. uh, her husband, Ron, is not well. Mm -hmm. So let's pray for Ron. Mm -hmm. And our 100-year-old um, member, is she our oldest member? I think so. Betty Rowe needs prayers. Yeah. How long this is how it goes. But Kevin, can you just start playing and we'll, I'll give you the words first. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget an answer to my prayer? No tokens of your love I see. Your face is turned away from me. I wrestle with despair. Will you forsake and leave me in this way? When will you come to my relief? My heart is overwhelmed with grief by evil night and day. How long, O oh Lord, but you forgive with mercy from above. I find that all your ways are just, I learn learn to praise you and to trust in your unfailing love. Listening God, we bring our lament for the world. We pray for an awareness of your presence, not your abandonment. We pray for light in the darkness. We pray to know that it is holy darkness when you are working in us and with us. We pray for an awareness of your presence for all whose voices are not heard, for all who know no love, for all who despair, for all who feel alone, for all who are heavily burdened, for all who see and know firsthand some of this world's evil. Lamenting God, we know that you lament for us too. So forgive our lack of trust. Forgive us our failure to forgive others. Forgive us our lack of mercy. Loving God, hear our prayers for Greg and Ron and Betty. Help us to live our prayer as Jesus did. 
daring to call you, the one to whom he himself prayed. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All right, so we're next uh, the Friday's um, devotion, Margaret is going to um, reflect on probably a pretty familiar text, First uh, Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. It'll be short um, because I'm <laughs> lacking in voice, but also because there are just two things in it that strike me. Oh, okay. So I think if I only got two things out, out of Out of seven verses. About seven verses, good. God may have something to say to me. Yep. Hmm. Well, very good. We look forward to that on Friday. So our benediction are the, um, is the refrain to the hymn, Holy Darkness. As the watchman waits for morning and the bride awaits her groom, so we wait to hear your footsteps as we rest beneath your moon. Holy darkness, blessed night, heaven's answer hidden from our sight. As we await you, O God of silence, we embrace your holy night. Mm. Amen. Amen. Beautiful oh. tune, too. Yeah. 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 So have a good evening. Good night. Mm -hmm.